How are you, Jenks? John, how are you doing, pal? All right, mate, yeah. How's it going? All right. Who's on? Woody, Greg, Woody Greg. I'm just going to hey. say, Jenks, hey, fellas. Jenks, that's the most I've ever heard you speak at once. Uh, well, I don't need to say much. You do it all, don't you? John lives in his mansion in the countryside. Keith, you can't be far behind. <laughs> what, what are you definitely, it. definitely not far behind. If actually, my good friend. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in the Alps. I'm in, in the chalet. Oh, you look like you're in a sauna. I'm not. I'm not. Obviously, I'm not. It's my office. Hi, Dad. Woody. John. Thanks. Hi, Hilda. Hello, mate. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Really good. Lawrence. Gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Woody. Doing it. Yeah. You can't see you, Dodge. Ah, uh, for the bear. There we go. A bear of a wee. Oh, James. No, we doing, pal. You okay? Doing very well, boys. Just something to make a glass of wine before we get going. Jono, you've never changed. <laughs> <laughs> the bosses are in. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Afraid to say anything, no? Only a hundred more scrums, boys. <laughs> Shut up, Jim. The pleasure at the end. That's what it's for. It's pain and pleasure. Oh, squeeze. Squeeze. And when you're dying, and when you're hanging out, and when you can't take another step, just think it out. Think of the faces you're looking at. Come on, squeeze. Come on. That's it. Think of the faces you're looking at now. Don't let them out. They won't let you down. Maybe. It's funny how it turned out. Everybody's extremely nervous about doing it, quite rightly so. But uh, in the end, we got they were even there. You didn't even know that they were there. And uh, I think the fact that uh, we won the series uh, uh, helped considerably. But it was a great, it was a great video in the end. I was uh, proud to be part of it. Yeah, we can say that. Uh, I don't think Jim and I, well, you maybe did fine. <laughs> Had nothing to do with it. <laughs> So we had to be careful what we said sometimes. Yeah, well, yeah I was always very careful. Had any input in the decision, Geach, but I was just told we were doing it, so... <laughs> I thought so, yeah. John Bentley show, anyway, wasn't it? Thanks, <laughs> 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 oh, I was just thinking about that as well, Jim. Good to see you had to watch what you were saying. I did not swear too much. <laughs> we got in touch with Fran, and we I went up to see Fran in uh, sale or at, at his office. We then kind of put the financial deal together, which Fred's father um, kind of was backing at the time, and kind of we were put in a position where we were expecting to get um uh, backing from you know itv or someone along those lines um but that never happened well fred would know better we'd given the lions the money and we didn't have a backer and so we went and did it ourselves um which you know it was uh, both a well it was probably the uh, the best decision because you didn't have any other influences on the documentary uh, so yeah, that's where it came about. Fred, what's your views on it? You know, obviously rocking up with all of you guys was a, a slightly daunting kind of prospect. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, yeah, so we, as far as I remember it, we bought the rights off the lines to make the film and then we couldn't sell it. So then we were stuck with the fact of, you know, do we just sort of leap off the cliff and take a bigger financial risk and hope for the best or, or just watch our money flitter away. So yeah, luckily for us all, we, um, yeah, we took the risk. To send as many sponges into any other area that you want. The team that lands the most sponges on the ground in the area are the winners. <laughs> Given time, any team will form. But the one thing you haven't got is time. I mean, you've got eight weeks of life as lions from today until you return. So it's in everyone's interest that this process happens quickly and as effectively as it can. 11. 11. Look at that. I give up. <laughs> it's a massacre. <laughs> 12, 12, 13.
Well, the bit I can remember was there was water coming down a pipe and it soaked me deliberately. And I think it was it was a setup to to uh, see how I would react. And I think uh, the idea of, of working every every morning, I think, uh, in teams, different teams, gave you uh, an idea of how of the, the guys on the tour because we didn't didn't know them before we we met, and so it was a Although it was uh, the, the the exercises were quite funny at times, they, they did make you think and did make you work to try and work out situations that would probably happen in the field uh, later on. So uh, the, my impression was they were very well thought out, and although there was a lot of uh, mucking about and so on, uh, it, it, did, it was a bit of fun, which was very serious and. I think it uh, worked very well for the tour. Yeah, I think um, Fran and I, we, we, we spoke to a few companies, Fran, if I remember rightly, and, and impacts who took it on were really good because they could relate to what we're trying to do about the support. And we said that nothing could be achieved individually. It had to be in a minimum of threes. Uh, to try and get the idea of support and this teams within teams. And of course, I think John or Lester had played a final on the that weekend before we met up. So we were conscious that actually the players needed a break from rugby, but we could get to a chance to get to know each other um, really well in, in different ways. Yeah, I, I think you're right. We played it a long, long season. So I think for us, it was great not to be on the rugby field straight away. You know, we only probably trained about two or three times maximum in yeah. that week. Yeah, three three sessions. And um, it was just nice to meet the guys under different circumstances and just being on the pitch. So I think it went down well. It, it was a break. It was a break away from rugby. And uh, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was good fun. They, they were pretty, pretty good exercises. So, yeah, better than... Uh, Ben and Jim's uh, scrimmaging <laughs> sessions, anyway. <laughs> Doddy Weir, you were seen by a group of uh, South African journalists in the nightclub <laughs> in Port Elizabeth around midnight on Friday. Now, you weren't playing on Saturday, but it was our understanding that the team management had put a curfew on for everybody at 11 o'clock. There's no suggestion that you were actually but you had had a few beers. Mistaken identity. <laughs> Could you tell us the British line who it was then? My father's out on tour or something. <laughs> it was one of these things. Uh, being in Scottish folk, but uh, nobody used to that. You see in the shop. Lawrence Delagio is sleeping at the back, and I'm quite a shy boy, so you can see I was trying to hide away from John asking me any questions. I mean, he called me out, I went, oh no, what am I going to do? So we answered it as well as we could, but I showed you as well what the two meant. Having to do things like that would be us all, all together, which is very good fun. Well, thank you for bringing that back here. <laughs> I, uh, again, great time. Uh, when you get the letter through to say that you go to join the lines, it's quite special. And joining the squad with some legends of the game, both on and off the field. Is very special. Uh, but from that day, as you said, I think in my speeches, it's a very memorable party and there is something very special. And every time you meet the players on that tour, you kind of think it's like yesterday. And it was a joy, it was good fun while I was there, hard work. I think the empathy was a hard work and good fun. I think that brought the result at the end. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I am uh, Mr. J.R.R. Hartley, Chief Clerk to the court, and I'd like to call on uh, the members of the bailiffs, 
And last but not least, Shawzy, who's now known as Bruce. Bruce, step on in. <laughs> and last of all is the Honourable Lord Chief Justice Fester himself. If you'd like to take a bow, please. All rise, please. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. Yeah, yeah. Here comes the judge. <laughs> I left my brother outside, so I'd like to bring him back in. Ruprecht! Ruprecht, come in! Ruprecht! Open the door there for Randy, Ruprecht. Randy, can you go fetch him, please? Ruprecht! Ruprecht, come in! <laughs> I was chatting to uh, to Jano about it during the week, and he said, Woody, that was a very good idea of yours. And I said, I can't remember who made that decision. I didn't think it was me at all. And it was before the, um, I think it was before the first test, and we hadn't really had, um, not a blowout, but there was a lot of pressure. You know, the pressure was building all the time. And it was just to have something that was simple, fun. And also it kind of gave us a bit of an opportunity to have a go with the coaches and bury them with whiskey, which was, which was good because we couldn't really drink with the game coming up. So uh, actually I think Geach is the one who suffered the most for it. Um, and you're a, cra you're a crap Scotsman, if we're honest, Geach. You barely touched the whiskey, you barely touched the sides. But uh, I, I think it's important to try and take some of the pressure off. But um, we haven't done one of those for, for years and years, I'm trying to remember how we had done them back in the amateur days. So. Normally, we'd have all been on the lash in the midst of that too. Yeah, I got set up by Fran. There was a fair few shots of whiskey in that glass, I seem to remember, but I thought I'd better try and get it down in one. No, we had <laughs> the only time we were evicted. Yeah, yeah, we basically had no idea that that kind of thing really happened. But uh, yeah, I do remember there was quite a lot of trepidation about us filming it. And we were already in there for a bit, weren't we, Junk? And then we kind of, someone gave us the nod told us to get out and we left you all to it yeah, yeah. Um, so why don't you tell us what happened then when we left absolutely okay. nothing nothing happened <laughs> absolutely nothing you all, all had a cup of tea I think whatever, whatever they put in my ear that night uh, I've never recovered since I've been bald since if you ask me so uh, I blame Woody anyway it was uh, that was a fantastic fantastic night the nice thing you know Brilliant to be a part of it and happy to dress up as Ruprecht from Dirty Rotten Scandals and give the boys a bit of fun. <laughs> it was a great night. Um, you know, Shaw's, he was born to play that role and so was Woody. Um, and, but these moments are priceless, you know, in any sort of dynamics of it all. We're away a long time, we're, we're physically demanding, so you need that ability to get, to get away from it and um, to make it for ourselves and each other. Uh, and that's the whole basis, and that sort of chemistry is really crucial interesting at all and um, it was a good night and we had a good night as well but um, that was pretty key as Woody said um, in setting the tone for us uh, worked as hard as we could on the field but also enjoyed as well and that's, just, that's the secret ingredient of a lion uh, of being on a lion club.